Hi, I'm Robin Boyce for City Corner. Join us because we're going to talk about Greater St. Louis Inc. and UMSL Accelerate. Hi, I'm Robin Boyce for City Corner. Thank you for joining us today in the studios or in the Zoom studios, I should say. We're still Zooming and I, I kind of like it. It's going really good. I've got with me from Greater St. Louis, Inc., Ms. Valerie Patton, who is Chief Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Officer for this organization. And Valerie, you've been involved for many years now in some capacity with those civic uh, type organizations and they decided probably towards the end of 2020 to combine. Tell us more about that effort. I would be more than happy to, Robin. Uh, first, I'd like to say thank you for having me today. I'm Thanks very for humbled, honored, and blessed to have this opportunity. Greater St. Louis, Inc. is a merger of five economic development organizations, uh, Civic Progress, Arched Park, Downtown STL, the St. Louis Regional Chamber and Alliance STL. They are private uh, economic development organization representing 15 counties, eight in Illinois, seven in Missouri. And our charge is really to create a greater St. Louis. Uh, we have eight initiatives uh, within the uh, Greater St. Louis Inc. Uh, I not only as chief diversity, equity, and inclusion officer, which means I run through a thread through each one of those initiatives. I'm also president of the Greater St. Louis Foundation, which uh, really garners resources to do the work that we have to do uh, within Greater St. Louis Inc. So that is more when we're looking at grant funding for our program. Um, there are the eight initiatives, and I, I'm going to hope that I don't forget one today. That's okay. Uh, but <laughs> no, you have a lot of initiatives, but we, if actually, if we can get through one or two or three of them, that will probably really help us understand Absolutely. what it is you all are doing. Go right ahead. So I can do that. So mm -hmm. I lead the Inclusive Business Solutions Initiative, which is Multicultural Leadership Development, our fellows program now going into its 16th year, is taking uh, leaders that have been nominated throughout the region, um, and we're going to work on community and relationship building. We're gonna look at civic engagement and service, and then on a monthly basis for a year, we do uh, professional leadership development. Over 800 uh, leaders in 28 states and two countries, uh, some notables here in our region, Michelle Tucker, who leads the United Way of Greater St. Louis, uh, Patricia Coleman, who leads Behavioral Health Response, Julio Zagaro Bayon, who is the owner of ZB Markets, one on South Grand, one in Maplewood. Okay. Uh, our Diverse Business Accelerator is for what we would call mid-mature businesses. So generally about a half a million dollars in revenue at least one employee during a 12 week session. We look at their business plan. We um, look at their financials and it's really about how do we grow scale and advance them. And we have about 30 companies in that portfolio to date and we're in our sixth cohort and we do two cohorts a year. Uh, Civic Progress, which was one of the merged organizations which yes. is now dissolved they started a racial equity task force back in the June 2020 timeframe, which had five work streams, business, community, justice, education, and health. So we will be moving that work of the task force to Greater St. Louis Inc. And we will be looking at how do we implement some of the recommendations and forward the work of that group. Now, um, Valerie, when you, when, you, when you have an organization that's already done that work and put together that plan and, and you all have come together now to, uh, I guess, put a greater push on what goes on, who do you go to to get things done in the St. Louis area or to involve? How, do, how are you all actually engaging, I guess, would be the question, 
those who need the help and want to grow in this community. Absolutely. So when you, you talk about that, another piece of the plan that will be getting released in about the next 30 days is the STL 2030 jobs plan. It is really? a two year jobs plan. First jobs plan we've done in over a decade, which is really looking at inclusive economic growth in our region because our population has been relatively flat yes. and we need to look at jobs which will create greater economic growth in our region. So how do we get all this work done? Right. We have a team of about 28. So that says, oh, we need some help. Uh, so we work with the business community. We work with the larger community. So more of those, some of them established organizations and then some more grassroots organizations. Mm -hmm. So we will have councils, task force committees that will help us do this work throughout the region that we serve. Because we've recognized we can't do it all on our own, but as we set our plans and set our priorities, we say, who's the best in class in the region in any particular background that we're right. looking at? Yes. So it may be working with, just an example, it could be working with the United Way on some of their initiatives that they already have. It may be working with the Urban League and some of their initiatives they already have. It may be working with the Forward Through Ferguson group, which was born out of the Michael Brown unrest and the Ferguson Commission, and they have 184 tasks that they've charged the region to get done. So we may right. work with them. So right. it could be not only business, but it could be community, nonprofit, grassroots. But what is it going to take for us to get the work done? Yeah, that, and that's really the big question. And for years, of course, uh, people have always asked, well, what are some of those big organizations doing? And how can I get involved? And what can I do? I mean, what can the average citizen who's probably looking at this program wakes up and goes, oh, well, well how do I get involved? What do I need to do to get my neighborhood together? Who do I need to talk to about this food desert that I live in? Who do I need to reach out to to talk about the fact that we actually do need a, a health center down the street here or an emergency situation set up for people who are getting hurt in a specific community? Who do I need to talk to? Because I've got this great idea and I would love for them to bring Nike in here or Reebok or some outside businesses to build factories so we've got like two or three different shifts to employ people. So is this the kind of organization that a person can reach out to to get to that kind of, of, of uh, implementation and plan? So you can start with us. So I will encourage people, if you have an idea, if there is something you think you really want to do, then I would encourage you to go to www.greaterstlinc.com. And we have a button where you can leave your ideas, um, your thoughts. You can respond, give us comments on the SDL 2030 jobs plan. You can put whatever you need for us to know there. We may not be able to satisfy your request, but we will know where to channel it. So we will know based on who we're partnering with who we're working with, where it can go. So, Valerie, tell us, are, are we getting closer and closer with everything that's been happening around the world uh, with reference to racial, sexual, all of those things that have a, can affect a community? Are we getting any closer to some true cross-cultural engagement here in the St. Louis area? I'm going to say yes but I am still hopeful that we can be better. Um, because what I know about communities, uh, people have to feel like they belong. People have to feel like they're welcome. So not, and, and you don't have to be from outside of St. Louis to feel like you're welcome. Right. 
So I think with the election of the new mayor, I, I, I think with uh, the progressives, uh, and we were all progressives at one point in time in our lives. Yes, we were. <laughs> <laughs> that I think we are beginning to see a shift, not only on priorities, but also on energy, on wanting to really, truly make sustainable change in our region. So as the African proverb says, it takes a whole village. Yes. Um, but it's, since I am now a baby boomer progressive, that um, at the end of the day, I have to be willing to open my eyes and my ears uh, and my spirit to helping those that are now what we call millennials and Gen Zers to realize and, and do the work that needs to be done to make this a great community to live, work, play, and invest. And, and I, think, I think a is. lot of them are open to it. They're, they're open to guidance from folks like you, myself. I get calls all the time. I'm like, maybe I need to put a shingle out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I swear, I, have, I got a, a call or a text the other day from someone talking about, I need some journalists. I'm like, really? <laughs> but this is a millennial who got their start out there in Ferguson doing their thing. And they know that I know this individual can help at least guide me to get to where I need to be. So I, I really enjoyed talking with you about what it is that Greater St. Louis Inc. is doing. I want to have you back on to talk about some other programs that you've got going on, that fellowship program and some of the other things. Thank you so much, Ms. Valerie Patton, for coming on and talking with us. And uh, we will be right back after this with a lot more information on UMSL Accelerate. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I had something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. What I love about St. Louis is the 79 unique neighborhoods nestled into 108 city parks, including Forest Park, which is actually larger than Central Park in New York, and of course, the beautiful Tower Grove Park where I'm at now. All oh, the St. Louis Blues. We've got the St. Louis Surge, two-time WBCBL champions. We've got Harris Stowe, Wash U, St. Louis University, and of course, the 11-time World Series champion, St. Louis Cardinals. So come experience St. Louis. Oh, have you seen that piece, piece on the Tiffany neighborhood on STL TV? No. Let me show you. My wife and I were looking for homes. We lived in the city all of her life, and there's just a, a different energy when you're in, in the city. 
keep up with what's happening in your neighborhood, watch STL TV. Be in the know. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes, and you can do it here. So what are you waiting for? Just go to the site. There's so many reasons to love St. Louis, you can't pick just one. What I love about St. Louis is the 79 unique neighborhoods and 108 beautiful city parks, including Forest Park, which is actually larger than Central Park in New York, and the gorgeous Tower Grove Park right here. And there's always something new to experience, no matter the time of day or the season. So come and experience St. Louis. Hi, I'm Robin Boyce for City Corner. Thank you for coming on back. We've got some good information here to share with you now about UMSL Accelerate. And with me is Executive Director Daniel Laura, who is with UMSL Accelerate, Akeem Shannon, the owner of Flipstick LLC, Michelle Robinson, who's owner of Demi Blue Natural Nails, and also Mr. Tehran Heyru Lewis. Did I get that right? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Taran, Taran, see, I knew I was going to do it. I knew I was going to do it. Taran Heyru Lewis, who is the owner of Heyru Urban Farming. How are you all doing? Thank you so much for coming on board. Daniel, yeah. please, Dan, tell me a little bit more about UMSL Accelerate, please. Thank you. We just had Valerie on with downtown STL, and so UMSL yes. has 70,000 alums that live and work here in St. Louis. Yay, yeah. that's us. Yes. And, and so our Chancellor Kristen Soblick's very involved with the downtown STL 2030 plan. When it comes to Accelerate, we know that uh, most net new jobs since World War II are from entrepreneurs that are here on the show today. And so when you think about Accelerate and you think about the, 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 some, of the, some of the struggles we see in the community, it starts with economic development. So positive change happens with investment. So we have degree programs, we have a lot of good things going on. We have corporate accelerators, student accelerators, but we said, why not do a call to action around minority founders and grant $50,000 equity free. Wow. A best in class accelerator program with students, faculty and alums. And we got over 430 applications. 430 <laughs> applications you received? Yes. So that had been phenomenal. It's amazing. We had ecosystem partners help us vet, and we had six winners. The three of these folks today are coming off of a eight-week accelerator where we fire hose them with all kinds of things. Good. But importantly, they're now tasked with growing and scaling their businesses. And hopefully with the tools and with their energy and with their passion, with their experience, we're going to see uh, job growth, economic development right here in St. Louis. I believe that because it's time, it's the movement is here, uh, progressive, uh, progressive thinking is in the movement. And I think that was pretty progressive for UMSL to actually support and put a program like that together. Akeem Shannon, tell us a little bit more about this fantastic Flipstick. What's that all about? Yeah, so Flipstick. So it's this little phone accessory that goes on your phone here. And and what it does is one, it functions as a kickstand, right? So you can prop it up, you can watch videos, YouTube, Netflix, all that good stuff. But what's really cool is when you reveal our synthetic CT technology. So this is actually based off the foot of a gecko. I got that idea from my uncle, who's an engineer at NASA. And essentially yeah. it lets you stick your phone to any flat surface. So it sticks okay. to wood, glass, metal, pretty much anything. You can stick it in the car to do hands-free pictures, photos, selfies, all that good stuff. Uh, and it's reusable and washable. So you can use it over and over again reusable for thousands. Reusable and washable. How did you come up with this idea? What, what made you decide that this is what you think would work? So honestly, it was pretty crazy. You know, it was, it was a late night phone call with my uncle, who I mentioned was an engineer at NASA. Yeah. And he was actually just telling me about a project he was working on. And as he's explaining the project to me, I'm like, man, if I had just had an adhesive like that, I could have slapped my TV on the wall, saved me a lot of time from mounting it. And while I knew, you know, the TV may not work, a phone, a phone may be able to work. And that's really how the idea was born. From there, I, you know, went on YouTube, taught myself to write a patent, trademarks, and eventually launched a Kickstarter campaign. And okay. it's been a wild, 
trip ever since. <laughs> this see now we got this money coming into St. Louis pretty soon from uh, the stimulus package. We need to find a building over there in North St. Louis so we can set it up and say, get get things rolling, right? So we, we need exactly. to get you know, so there you go. <laughs> we get two or three shifts going and everybody will have jobs and it'll be a beautiful thing, right? All right. Uh, Moving on to Miss Michelle Robinson. I love it. Oh, I'm <laughs> And have been into nails all of my life, ever since I was a little girl. Just make you feel girly and everything. Tell us about your nail product. It's called Demi Nail, a Demi Blue a Nail Knack for Natural Nails. Yeah, so uh, Demi Blue is a vegan friendly nail polish brand. Vegan. Yes. So I started the line after my mom's experience with cancer. Um, I wanted to make sure that her remission plan included her having healthier cosmetics that didn't contain a lot of the toxins that are found in our conventional products. Great. Now, did you, are you, do you have a science background with reference to looking at what's going on with certain chemicals or, or, or did you get to want to help you with that so that you could develop this kind of nail polish? All of the above. Um, I spent over 11 years in healthcare. I worked for Washington University. Um, as a clinical administrator. So I did have background in those chemicals and understanding how they impacted the body. And then I hired a team to help me create and develop the product. And it's really making a difference because a lot of people cannot use some of the nail polishes that are out here. Like you said, they may have some toxics in, in them that will affect their body. I mean, and people don't really realize that about some of the chemicals that are out here and some of the beauty products that we use as women. Exactly. And um, yeah, we have over 28 colors in our collection and we just rolled out Demi Blue for girls. Oh, wow, for the babies. I, I yes. had a business on that is, is working with young girls and etiquette and teaching them how to be beautiful. That is absolutely fantastic. Okay, that's another factory that we've got to get funding for to set up yes. two or three shifts. So everybody have some jobs in St. Louis. I love this. Yes. Okay, my man after my own heart, the farmer. I, I tell you, you know, my dad was grew up as a farmer, okay? okay? And when I read about your story, I was like, oh my God, dad would love to have met you. Uh, he taught me so much about gardening and growing my own food. Why did you get into this business? Wow. Well, first and foremost, I do have farmers in my in my um, in my family as well. I'm a fifth generational farmer. Uh, my uh, my great uncles and um, they was all farmers down Lamar County in, in uh, Paris, Texas. They won uh, first place prizes in the fifties. Even in 1939, they started a um, all black co-op with with 24 acres, you know, and they, they was growing tomatoes, so that's in my bloodline as well. So, so it's, it's definitely it's definitely my ancestors was definitely um some good farmers. But I started personally, uh, you know, I, I live in a food desert, you know, uh, mm -hmm. so I, I'm I'm included with over 700,000 people in, in this region don't have uh, sustainable produce within a half mile of their neighborhood. So, and where I live at on the north side, you know, I try to go to the local, um, you know, the one I do have is is not really um. A good a good look in there you know you go in there you have you have a small variety of things so i start right. going to different you know the different areas you know and going to the grocery stores and just, just to look and see how it is so i ended up on my journey ended up in west county and um i went to their grocery stores out there and i was like wow it's just a big difference you no know, night and day so i yes. told myself somebody had to do something about it so i decided to do something about it and so um uh, you know 2018 um I, I saw a vacant lot it was the lra property um, I, I got a garden lease for five dollars in five years, and I was just growing food for myself, actually. And people in the community started talking to me, people I never talked to before, asking me questions, um, asking, figuring out what I'm doing. Then we started a conversation and it took off from there. So um, I, I saw a need, I saw a demand, and I told myself I need to get a supply for it. So I started off at 10,000 square feet, now I have four acres. So I'm just trying to keep growing, wow. buying food. Yep. This is good. Now, wh where is your farm actually located? Okay, uh, my, well, my, my baby, my first one is on the north side on Maffitt. Uh, okay, I'm over on Maffitt and Union. What? Uh, Maffitt and Union. Okay. Yeah, Maffitt and Union, yeah. Uh, that, that, that's my first one. That's for basically for the community over here. Um, my other locations in Bell Fountain, um, I, have, I have three and a half out there. Uh, so um, and then this year, I just got uh, another half acre with, with room to expand out there, and that's in Florence on Shocker Forest. It's actually on Confluence Farms. Uh, I don't know if you heard of Confluence Farms, but everything they grow goes to North Sarah Food Hub. 
So uh, okay. Yeah. So so you I got kind of uh, locked in and converged with those folks to to do food. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's great. Have you had to hire some staff to come on and help you out to to uh, farm those locations and keep it going? How's that uh, going? Oh, uh, most definitely. Uh, man, it's going good. When I first started, it was just me, so that was kind of hard. So uh, so um, so so with the help of the Umso Accelerator, I hired uh two full time employees, um, uh, which which is awesome. Uh, they both are great. Um, Slate gave me some workers. I, I'm gonna have ten right now. I got three from Slate with some more to come on because some of them are still in school. So when they done with school in May, they'll jump aboard as well. So um, yeah, I've, I've been. Hey, this has been a blessed year for me to have that help. It's nothing like um, have some extra hands out there on the farm. But you're doing something. You you are really completing a service, just like I was talking with uh, the other two guests about setting up those factories. You already you got it rolling. The factory's rolling where you are with the farm, and you just need more people to come in and support that to make it happen for you. Yes, Dan, I'm so accelerate. Are you going to have more uh, fellowship programs set up like this for people to join so that they can actually learn a lot more about how to run businesses like this? Yes. Yeah, so our first sponsors were Ameren Express Scripts, Edward Jones, and it was a pilot. We didn't know what we were going to get. The results are going to just be incredible and we're going to do a second one this year and get bigger better hopefully we'll get 10 entrepreneurs this time to fund instead of just six that is excellent i mean actually organizations and that's all what it's about with st louis the larger organizations getting together and making a difference in supporting younger newer businesses to do the, the things that they need to do it's not so much sometimes they add we have to wait on the big guys to come in and solve all the problems in the community. We've got a lot that's of great that. young, small businesses out there that are making a difference. It, it, do you think that's so, Akeem? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, 100%. I mean, you know, being in this program, we had six incredible entrepreneurs across a very wide variety of different industries. And we're all like doing our part that are making the difference in this world. Actually, me and me and Michelle are, are going to be on an amazing local only uh, basket for Mother's Day. And that's something that, you know, wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for our, you know, networking in this program. So uh, I'm excited to see what St. Louis has to offer. And I'm excited to grow my business here in St. Louis, you know, because of I'm so I'm excited, and that, I'm excited to hear. This is great. Oh, yeah. I'm excited to hear. I'm excited, Michelle, that, that you're here. I'm so excited that Mr. Lewis, that you're doing the things that need to be done in the community as well and feeding people and putting folks to work. Dan, thank you so much for what you all are doing out there with Umso Accelerate. This is absolutely fantastic. Don't forget me. I want to come out there and help you guys. Okay, Dan? Thank you very this much. Is great. This is great. I really appreciate you all coming on and I appreciate for you tuning in to City Corner this round. We've got a lot of great information coming up on City Corner on down the line. Stick with us and you have a fantastic week.